is a social institution and not a physical reality. There is, in other words, no such thing as time in the natural world, the world of stars and waters and mountains and clouds and living organisms. There is such a thing as rhythm, rhythm of tides, rhythm of biological processes. But time as such as a social institution, uh, in the same way that uh, language is, that number is, that concepts are, and all measurements, inches, meters, lines of latitude and longitude, all those things are social institutions or conventions. The word convention from the Latin conveniri, to come together, to agree about something, to hold a convention, and thus, of course, uh, in its deteriorated sense, when we say of something, it's purely conventional. That is to say, you needn't take it seriously. Now, of course, are we going to take time seriously? That is the big question. And it depends what you mean. If you don't understand that time is a convention, of course you take it seriously. And you are driven by time. Time is money. Time is of the essence. And we do, don't we, live in a culture or a complex of cultures in the Western world where we are literally driven by time. If you read a book like Jules Henry's marvelous work, Culture Against Man, he documents in the most extraordinary way to what an extent this particular culture is driven. So that even the psychologists have altered uh, the word, the old-fashioned word, instincts, and now they call them drives. Because there's this feeling You've got to make that deadline. There's something there you've got to get to. And people feel driven even when, um, supposing uh, that something's going to happen. You've got an appointment coming up. And some people find that in a strange way unsettling. They are so either eager to make this thing or so anxious about it that in between time they can't do anything else. They're incapacitated until it happens, until the blessed event or whatever it is occurs. But in the natural physical world, there is rhythm and there is motion. And time then obviously is a way of measuring motion by comparing motion with some sort of constant. Now the constant in the question of time is a circle marked out in 360 or 60 degrees. And that is time. We cause a hand, a pointer, to revolve around that circle at a regular speed, and that gives us a constant with which we compare all kinds of motions and rhythms. And so the clock is just like a ruler and is as abstract as a ruler and must be taken just for that, which means in a way not seriously, you see. That doesn't mean, of course, that you say, well, from now on we're going to melt down all clocks and use them for something else. Because conventions, social institutions, are very valuable. Corresponding to the watch, there is the compass, and that also is a circle, divided four ways, north, south, east, and west. The Buddhists speak of ten directions, because they have not only the eight points of the compass, but they add to that above and below. And in their mythology, they have guardian kings, whose duty it is to guard the ten directions. And you see them at the entrances to temples and places like that. All a fearsome aspect. The cosmic traffic cops. Who are 
all that fierce and all that firm about it all. Because it is, after all, important that I can meet you at four o'clock in the afternoon at the corner of 42nd Street and 5th Avenue. Because if we couldn't make that sort of agreement, that sort of convention, we couldn't convene. And insofar as it is important to us to meet, uh, we require these sorts of compasses and timers in the vast emptiness of the cosmos. But we must recognize that these things are, as it were, written across vast emptiness. The ground of being, as Tillich calls God, has nothing in it where you can stand. You can't catch hold of it. You can't describe it. But you can imagine all sorts of things in it. Indeed, perhaps the whole physical universe is such an imagination. of man's of consciousness, of his conscious attention. Conscious attention uh, is so uh, worked out that it tends to ignore all constants. In other words, when you move from the Middle West and come and live in California, at first when you get here you think, oh this is fantastic place. It is so beautiful and so lush and so on. And you stay here after a while. And uh, in a few years, you start taking the place for granted. Because it's a constant stimulation of consciousness. Also, for example, when you're listening to recorded music, there is always a kind of electronic hum. But we screen that out and ignore it. And so it becomes unconscious. Well, so in a similar way, there is what you might call a continuum, a something or other, in which all physical phenomena exist. And uh, you ignore it, unless in some way or other you can make it hum. And so various practices like uh, performing yoga exercises, or Zen meditations, or certain kinds of chemicals, can cause your entire sensorium to hum. And this draws your attention to the ground, the background of everything that you're perceiving, which you ordinarily ignore. I think there is going around an entirely new religion called hum. And uh, hum uh, has no organization, no hierarchy, no doctrines only music and ritual and uh, just hum if anybody asks what it's all about they say well come and see <laughs> come in here come and hum <laughs> uh, that would be kind of nice to have something like that I don't know whether it exists or not but it ought to but at any rate the the, the continuum in which everything occurs is of course basically what you are only because we get absorbed in details, we, we forget all about it. Deep down, far, far within yourself, you know very well indeed that you are that. And that what we call consciousness and unconsciousness, coming and going, life and death, are changing uh, modalities within this uh, whatever it is we are. And your identities come and go, 
your forms, your bodies, your this, your that. It's all oscillating, like everything oscillates. It wouldn't harm if it didn't. And so, though we are, each one of us, uh, all this cosmos and all this universe, its ground, we don't know it.